Webster's. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this very first day of November, it should be an exciting month. We're looking at the Dow up 23 at 33,074. So the candles, there isn't a precedent. I've been going back uh, years looking at the V-shaped turnarounds when the volatility index gets very high and you get a really nice turnaround. There isn't a strict pattern. And one of the reasons why I've been talking about um, the low on a Friday rather than a low on a Monday as being unusual is that, as to my memory, the most significant time was March of 2009 when on the 6th of March, Friday, we got that huge uh, sharp move down, which is actually where we went along the diamonds. Um, and it was Friday that the S&P made its low. The Dow did pull back. I don't remember now offhand if it made a new low, but the S&P did. And then it turned around. That was that was it. Um, and that was a so it was a Friday for the Dow, but the usual Monday. And to my knowledge and. and uh, I don't really want to go back and check this out. It's just that I was looking at Thursday was lousy. Friday was not good at all. And that said to me, this is the first time I thought it would happen the previous week, but that Friday was really quite a nice session. So that just canceled that out. And Sunday night looked like it was going to be weak, and then it turned out to be the futures were quite good. And then we just gapped up and went off to the races on, on Monday. <clears throat> So the VIX index went to 23. Now, the VIX index at 23 is high, con con you know, considering that it's mostly been, there's this gray line, which is in the about the 14s in the monthly chart. But you can see there was a chunk of time that was between 16 and uh, 13, or even 12. So that just said to me that it needs to go more than double to the upside. It needs to go to the high 20s, low 30s, to get the kind of V-shaped turnaround that is significant, that says to you, now you've got weeks, maybe even months to the upside. So I love the action, but we did not go, we were still long core position from October in the Dow and the UDAW three times long, um, and we've been trading in and out with short term, uh, three times shorts or longs. I didn't go into the Dow. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go to something different for subscribers to my opening call. We've got low price stocks. We've got, we've got a stock that's in the single digits. It's done really well. It's up about 60%. And then and I'll show you a stock that I want you to get in today. Um, and I had two choices. I'll talk about that in a moment. There's a lot to discuss now because it's the 1st of November. So we want to get into the, what can happen in the month of November. But we didn't get the high 20s and low 30s. So to me, we've made a low. I don't want to even discuss that now. Maybe uh, tomorrow's Friday. I'll get more into the technicals of the, the, the internal low and the residual, like an like earthquake and aftershock. All right. So in the meantime, I decided for subscribers, we would go into a triple digit stock about the price of the diamonds in the Dow, um, a favorite that I've loved for ages. We haven't got in, and we bought that yesterday. And it's going to be kind of now a bit of a bellwether for me because the way it's been acting has been very interesting in that there's a, there's a kind of a relationship that I like to the Dow itself. I know we have someone in the den who uses um, Nike. Uh, let's just go to Nike now um, as his benchmark. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't, for me, it doesn't have the, the pattern and it doesn't have the, the not necessarily the PE, but the, the link to the Dow that I like. 
That's all. So let's just go back to what we were looking at. I'm, I'm, I'm at the, uh, for now, I'm just going to go to the SMH and keep it there as I'm finish, finishing what I'm discussing here. So I think that we're looking at something that's very interesting because patterns are forming. Look at this semiconductor. Look at the methodical degree angle of the of the, the declines, the rallies, the declines, the rallies, all within the methodical Chapman wave down channel in this case with inside track propellant and repellent zones. To me, all of this is just so far, this does not signify crash material. And I have to tell you, every once in a while, I'm listening to an analyst and my heart just sinks. I'll never forget, Larry, I haven't told Larry this, but once um, once I was driving along and he was interviewing Arch Crawford. Now, I, I know Arch Crawford going way back. I mean, way back. I'm talking about decades, right? I, I've never signed up for he's I mean, It's just really interesting. He's got some really good calls and he's got some misses, like everybody. And he was talking about, I mean, I remember driving at the time. I'm saying, I was on my way to, uh, to Watertown. I live in Newton, Mass. And I was driving and I had an errand to do. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm almost about to crash into this pole. I just want to end everything from the way I and it was so depressing. And in fact, that turned out to be the low of, of the, that particular move. Um, so I love the fact that we've got the symmetry here in such an important index, the semiconductor index. Did we, we are short from over there. 161.17 was the all-time high. You can see it took out the November 2021, 159.42 all-time high. Um, it pulled back to 83. Should say pulled back, it got slumped. For over almost 50% and then rallied uh, over 50 to exactly, no, just under 50% to 161.17. And that was on the uh, 31st of July. We went short uh, two days later with uh, within two points of the all-time high. And we remained short. We had on the way down, we had some of the SOXS. We had some really nice gains. But I sort of stepped aside and I'm watching this and I'm saying the methodical pattern, especially when you've got a parallel percentage incline and decline, just says to me there's a normality here that is going to resolve itself without a crash type scenario. So I needed to cover that. So what I said was um, because of the rally yesterday and because I was, I don't know what I was really, I usually I'm really quick to do this. I, we didn't get into the, into the uh, Dow was it? Yes, it was Tuesday. Monday. We didn't get into a new position. We've got our core position, and we we're still short. But I decided yesterday we'd get into this alternate, alternate, uh, triple digit in the three hundred dollar stock, because I like to have a mix for subscribers of some big priced, middle priced, and very low priced. So. To me, what I'm looking at here is I like very much the action that we're looking at. So within that context, what is this doing here when we've made a lower low in the e in the SMH and there's a bit of a bounce? Is this going to be a rally, a really good rally, or is this a bounce and is it telling us about the market? I'll talk about that in a moment. And as we've got, this many trying to keep back behind If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Tigers. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. 
In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. I'm just typing this in. All right. So I had a question. I'll do it right now because this is very timely. Could I look at BRPHF? Never seen it before. Did a quick notational um, study here. Chapman Wave uh, peak E pulls back yesterday for that peak E, holding above the 200 period moving average. Weekly chart made a peak D, pull back sharply. It just constantly has these number of weeks between peaks and then goes higher. <clears throat> it once hit <clears throat> 30, I would say, let's call it 36 or 37, way back in 21, pull back sharply to the uh, 10 level then spiked up to 35, and then that was it. It came back and just about restarted its visit to the low area, and now it's trading at 4.68. Yes, I'm, I had said this the other day, <clears throat> uh, about a, starting about a week ago, I said, you know, I'm beginning to get, I would said about a month ago, six weeks ago, that I said, end of October, beginning of November, I could start to see a, a re-entry into the... Um, <clears throat> digital area. We haven't actually done that. We once had fantastic gains in GBTC. That's the Bitcoin fund. Um, just haven't done anything yet. I like this very much and I've been liking it for a while and I like it because of the, the <clears throat> I, I'll, I'll do this in a moment as a cross between uh, some things and other things. But in the meantime, what I, I would do is now the person asking me is, I know you have longer term positions and once you really set your mind to an area that you you are favorable to, you are prepared to put start those positions regardless as long as you know that the basic trend at least appears to be higher. As I'm looking at it right now, you won't see it from the monthly, but that's a peak A, peak B and a major peak C and it keeps testing for the first time in a year, it's been testing the 14 period moving average. The weekly chart has this, it looks almost like a biotech. If you look at this, I would have said, is this a biotech? Look at this. Well, because it looks like a biotech, I'd say that you have to build positions slowly. And the way to build positions slowly is to, every time there's a pullback, and in this case from a peak E, which means that it could be a little bit more than just a dip. I'm pulling this chart out. Look, this one uh, made, it failed, I think, at a peak C. Let me just do this real quickly. 
There's your low bar in Chapel Way. If you try to identify the lowest low bar, then you merely count each successively high peak, alphabetize sequentially, uppercase on the way up. That's a B. And that becomes, why, why does it not go B? B. Hey, hey, where am I typing this? B, there it is. Okay, if there's a parallel high, you could use that. Nope, it goes to a C and then fails. Now, it doesn't fail in the sense I can go C minus um, because it came all the way down without taking out the low. So this is actually still active, but it doesn't matter that it's active because it plunged from the 540s down to the 340s. And here it starts a brand new move, peak A, then underneath it, peak A, B, and then it goes to a C, D, E. I like this, and I'm going to say to you, yes, I think you've got your eye on the prize in the sense that it is very low price, and you've got to have wide stops if you're going to have a stop. In this particular instance, because it has a history of coming back to the 468 level, I'm going to say you could start your position here. How you add to it is you can discuss that another time. But this is if you haven't, where would, please take a look at VR, PHF. Where would you add? You see, you're saying add. That's very different to um, having your first position. I would add right now at 4.68. And I, if you're going to have a stop, give me a yell if it starts to trade under the 200 period moving average and gets to 4.20. Um, that's 42 cents, like a 10% risk. But it's an add on position for a longer term position. I hope that helps you. And this is not for everybody. Why? Because it's in the crypto area. But now the reason why I said I'm beginning to like it, because look, look at gold, as far as I'm concerned, gold was on its way to the uh, 16, 17, 1600 area. It had failed everything about it. And then you got the crisis, the Middle East crisis. But that crisis has had gold go from uh, a low of the 1820s in the continuous contract to the 2020 level, that is really good. I mean, there's no question about it. But if this was the kind of crisis that everything, everyone is turning to gold because it's both a financial crisis and it's a geopolitical, a geoeconomic economic crisis, uh, as well as geopolitical, I, I think it would be much higher. And I don't think you would see the GDX um, down at the 28 area. I think the GDX would be at 32, 33. So something's not right with that picture. And I think that if I look at Bitcoin uh, holding in this area, having broken out from this cup, double cup formation to the upside, I, I think money is now saying, you know what? Gold is as a, as a kind of a, a tradable, volatile commodity. Is not, it's not doing what crypto is doing. So because of that, and I mentioned this some time ago, I said, this cup formation, I'm watching it closely, I watched it closely, and then I just completely forgot about it, actually, because I think when it crossed, when Bitcoin, when, let me go to BT, G, sorry, GBTC, which is what we, when we do anything, we use that, GBTC, GBTC, there it is. Um, when it crossed positive in the nine period moving average right there, and had an alternate account that could have been an E slash B, and that, even that gap would have been good at 22. And here it is at 27. So, yes, um, good call. And I think, I think you're right in adding to your position. Uh, that was the question there. Um, uh, Basil, so many Russell, Russell stocks are beating up badly like J, JetBlue, uh, ALGM. I can't remember what that's called. I don't know the symbol well. LSCC, extra, XRX, this is Xerox, which is no longer the zero sale Xerox company. I've been seeing, yes, I'm looking at a lot of the stocks, and that's the reason. So now I'm going to talk about the stock that I missed today. Oh, it's up 4.5%. Four, four yeah, sometimes. I had two choices. There's a stock that we've been following here for absolutely forever. Um, and I'm not sure I have a platform from them. I think I might have one of my platforms here. So here's a stock. Uh, it's called BGC Group Broker Financial. And only when I read it in greater detail uh, last night, early this morning, did I say, oh, my, I didn't realize I'd put it in, but it just didn't trigger anything. It isn't just a broker and financial. 
doing fixed income, but it does equities, it does energy, and it does shipping. Uh, why did I miss that? So I'm looking at it, had a horrible candle uh, on Monday. Yesterday, had a really good candle, and I've, I'd already drawn in all this stuff. I hadn't really done too much work on the daily. I had done a peak C. And I thought, oh, my goodness. So I had what I call a screamer. It's in my list for my, for my subscribers. I have a list. I have a watch list. And then underneath it, I have, I mean, continuing in that, I have a screamer list. These are stocks under $10 that have the potential. If you get them, the day that you get them, we had that with UEC, a uranium corporation. The day you get it, it just moves up so you can take some off and you can keep a core position and then just let it go. So I had a choice. I'll talk about the choice because I think that's quite important. I'll be back. The Dow is up 154, S&P's up 29. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So we just got, I mean, the chat we've always been for at least a PC. Um, as a confirmation that you're in a buy mode, it can go higher, but D is the objective. And if it does that, uh, then you have to assess what can happen, go to an E, and then it could turn down just like the one minute chart did a few, uh, back at 10 o'clock, pull back. And now what have we got? Another peak A. It's as simple as this. Look, peak A. There. Peak B. 
And I always do this. When I get two parallel highs in a one-minute chart in something that trades at a quarter point rather than a, 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 a cent, one cent, I make that a phantom peak. I want to be ready. I want to be appropriately ready if, and it did that, when you get a little a little hook in either the on balance volume or the uh, relative strength index or the stochastic, and that allows me the liberty to do that in the confines of the Chapman methodology without negating anything, um, and I'm ready. So if I, I did not, I did have earlier on, I had uh, long positions. I got out of that because I was about to do my show. So now I'm a kind of a participant. I'm just watching. And now, so that's, but look how this peak D, the MACD's turned down, stochastics now under 80%. The on balance volume is pulling back, and nine period moving average is still strong. So I'm watching this closely, and this is like an alternate count A, B, C. No, it had, yep, it could be an alternate count G slash C in the, um, in the, there we go, uh, G slash C in the five minute chart. And we finally got that peak D with only one bar rest between each one. Look at this. From the low that was made at eight o'clock at forty one around about eight o'clock at forty one forty one about forty one ninety just under that, it would do leg A, peak A. Floating letter B goes for one, two bars, and it becomes a peak B with a lower high. Then a floating letter C starts just a quarter a quarter point uh, quarter note. I'm busy thinking music here. I've been doing so much uh, clarinet playing lately. Uh, used to be a professional clarinetist. Uh, now I just play uh, enjoyment. Uh, and now we've got one bar rest and um, leg C starts. One bar rest and we go to leg D. Now you say, is there a chance that you could start to see a bit of a deeper pullback? Well, the nine and the, and the one minute chart is strong. The nine in the five minute chart is strong. The nine in the uh, 10 minute chart is strong. On balance volume is suggesting in each one that it's getting a little toppy. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, and if you're long, I would just say stay long. Uh, and just moderate. So what I would have done, if I had whatever positions, I would have taken something off, try to keep it, and had a fairly tight stop. That's the way I do it when I've got a phantom peak. And very often with a phantom peak, it does go to that D. And all I do is I move that C. I'll still keep it ready to say, you know, you had that. This is, this is the evidence of what you were doing, your technique. And then you move it over here to the D. All right, enough with that, because I want to get back to the story. <clears throat> So a couple of questions that come in, and I was saying the BGC. So I had two choices. One is you grab it right at the opening, even if it's got a little bit of a gap up or whatever, or is it close to the close of the day before? You get it, and as it moves, you say, if I've got it, uh, I can. I, this is the stop. At this point, I'm going to raise the stop. At this point, I'm taking something off. At this point, I'm taking another little bit, or I'm just raising the stop, and I'm trying to hold it all, the, all through the day. That was my one choice. My other was, I thought the market had just a chance early, very early, because the futures were down, that there could just be one sort of sudden slide. And then usually when Fed speak comes along, whatever the market's doing about 30 to 45 minutes before, if it's up sharp, you start to pull back. If it's down sharp, you start to come back towards unchanged. But I missed this. Why? Because look what it did. It came to within one penny lower than the closing price of the day before. And now look at it. It is up 4.68, and there's your leg D. That's what we were looking for. Leg D this is not the trade I did. It's a trade I said we want to do, but on a pullback, but it didn't pull back. <clears throat> I didn't even discuss it, but it did have a Chapman Wave Roman candle. So this is doubly positive right now. New recovered multi-year, no, new yearly, no, multi-year, 2021 to 2023. <clears throat> Uh, recovery high, BGC group. Ugh, ugh. They've been watching it so long, and then I missed it. All right, it happens. Okay, let's just go to this right now. Let me go. Look, Jet Blue. It's it, these are all in the Russell. Oh, yes, Jet Blue. A nice move up today after gapping down yesterday. So in this particular instance, I personally wouldn't do it. I just I'm not into the airline group right now. But if you are looking for something as a tradable low in the single digits and just keep taking money off and go, wait and then get back and wait and get, this is at a 392. I wouldn't get in a 392. I'd wait for a little bit of a dip, but no less, than, no less. 
Yeah, then 388. And 388 has to be in the next hour. No, next 388 has to be in the next 30 minutes. Otherwise, you have to wait the entire day, whatever the Fed does. Is the Fed going to say something that does up 162, SBs up 28? What will they say that we don't really know? That would pull the back market back over 200 points and S and B down maybe 35 points lower. Um, it's I don't know. It's going to be a, an interesting uh, session later on. Uh, A L G M A L G M is uh, L G L. Oh no, I don't know this at all. Allegro McIntyre is that or something like that? Oh oh oh, this is a terrible looking chart. No, I, I wouldn't touch this yet. Because what you want is you want to get it and be this is the day that it turns around. I think it's a, it's a maybe a day or so off, having a, a, at least a decent percentage, like a one and a half point to two point move up. Um, and then I don't know what you do. I, I wouldn't touch this right now. EXTR, uh, this uh, EXTR, I think this is in the um, extreme networks. Oh, 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 I remember this. I remember this because it was on my, I wonder if it's still on my list. Uh, EX. No, I think I took it off some time ago. No, I took it off. It was on my list on the way up. We kept missing it. I kept saying, this is interesting. It's in an area that's had some problems and yes, doing so well. Yeah, so this is a little different, but I understand what you're saying. This, the gap, when it fills the gap and starts to go from 1768 where it is now and starts to trade between 21 and 2250 for about a week and a half, it's turned the corner, at least in the short to intermediate term. Um, extra Xerox. Now, it's interesting. Xerox, I, I played tennis with a guy. I don't know if he even is, stay, is there anymore, but he went to Xerox. He's in sales. Um, I, I can't, I don't even know really what it is because we just play tennis. We don't really chat. Um, it's a 3010 up 26 cents. So Xerox went into the transportation. It's like XPO in a way. I guess it does transportation uh, scheduling and that type of thing, the database. So this is different. This one here is something that it has a history, a history that goes back decades and decades and decades, except for one little thing. Um, it isn't the old Xerox. When we say we're going to Xerox something now, it's like, it's like, um, um, it's like uh, Uber. Say Uber in another six or seven years is now doing um, something completely different. Let's just say it's uh, manufacturing <laughs> manufacturing um, stools, right, or lambs, or whatever it is. Um, no, that's it. So look at it differently. So Xerox is different. I like it a little bit better. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Um, uh, Johnny, I want to ask you in the den, um, you say ES technicals. So are you talking about the, the uh, intraday, talking about the daily? So let me just have a look. And as I'm going there, so what I was saying is that this is the pattern I would look for that Xerox has just done as the chance that <clears throat> the downside, at least for the moment, the low that was made in the 12 area is at least a low that you can recognize as being a very good cushion. And I'll give you the exact number between 12 right here between 12.53, that's the high of the 26th, and the low of the day before, which was 12.06. Uh, so it says the 12 should be a good cushion, but the others didn't have anything like that. This is different. So if you were to start nibbling at 13.12, no fundamentals whatsoever, just nibbling at 13.12 because it's made a peak A, B, C, D in the arch formation in the weekly chart, and that says, that the straight line down, I love a straight line down because very often it means that all the selling pressure has just been instantaneous, just every hour of every day, just been selling, selling, and then you see it in the weekly chart, it means every week, every day, made lower lows and lower highs. And it just says it's just now ready to maybe fill in maybe this candle. So that's a, that's a better sign. And you've got your successful dreaded H, which is the lowercase M-shaped pattern in the monthly chart of Xerox. So I'm just I'm just putting it down here to make a note. I don't know if I would go into zero, so I just don't see it this time. What's the attraction um, on a, on a fundamental basis? So now let me just see if Johnny answered if he's listening. Uh, so no, okay. So let me do this because I think I did quite a bit of the technicals in the uh, one and five and ten minute charts, but I'm going to go to at es the technicals of the E-mini. <clears throat> so you see this, this upturn from a trough E back on the 3rd of October, was it the 3rd the 4th of October? You see the way it had a doji unsettling candle the following session, and then a really strong one, and then green, 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 green. And that A, the new A, was a floating letter, and it just keeps going up until it makes a peak A. But it was gray because... I didn't get any confirmation by going over 80% in the stochastic. MACD was good, but the nine-period moving average never went positive. It did a little later on, but it was too late. So that became an A-. minus. But now look what we're looking at. We're looking at, and I'm still going to say, I've seen what I think could be an internal low. I'm anticipating a residual low, and that could be higher, lower, or at the same level that we made the low. And this is the E-mini. I don't want to type the price in because it gets smoothed out and that price will change. But it is the low of the 27th of October. In this case, on the continuous contract, 41.22.25. So this is a this is what you like to look for as a takeoff. Now, the takeoff means it's got an A, a gray, a gray A once again, uppercase on the way up. So this is an A. And I usually don't even like to take the time. I just do this for visual purposes. 
I don't need it, but I like to show people what I'm talking about. This is a gray A. Why? Because the stochastic still hasn't even gone over 20%. The MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. Relative strength has started to rally, and that's very good. That actually gave you, uh, with the on-balance volume, the two together, gave you just a perfect reversal right there at the day of the low. So I, I like that. That's the reason why I didn't want to dismiss this and say, okay, now it's time to go short. I just This has to play out to the upside. And the way that a certain stocks are acting, it's going to be so important. And I'll, I'll go into that in a moment. A moment. Uh, let me check the time. The moment might disappear. So the technical say in this particular instance, this is, I have to wait for the day to close. And I really have to need, I need the stochastic and the channel wave. There's, there's a, a rule that says, the stochastic crossing under 10%, crossing positive, going green, going over the red, is the first sign uh, that a low is uh, being attempted. Then you want to see good price movement in A, and you want to see a move over 20%, and that says that the stochastic has now given you a buy signal. Just the stochastic, that's not everything. You want to see price movement with it. Then you have to see where the line period moving average is. It is way down. It says that to go positive, you're going to have to see the S&P up in the 4,300 area. So that's still a way to go. This is a work in progress. And that's the reason why I'm saying I can see another arch formation right here. So I don't know if this is the technicals you were talking about, Johnny, but I'm just doing it right now because a lot of people have asked the same sort of question. And it says to me, that this is a move, but I need to see other things, and I'm going to talk about that right now. So the weekly chart, nine period under the 14, and that also says a lot of work needs to be to be covered before you can get a really decent, sustained, longer-term, more intermediate-term type rally. So that's where we are, and that's the reason why I didn't want to get too excited and get back into the three times long, although if I was in it at the right level early on Monday, I'd be happy and I'd be saying fine. So instead what I did for subscribers, I said, look, I love, I don't usually talk about it, but I have a question coming, it just came in. Uh, so it's a question is the same sort of about the stock that we have, so I need to talk about it. So I decided that Microsoft, I've done so much work looking at Microsoft. I drawn in the cup formation. I drawn in the gap and it had a good response to earnings and then a horrible market type response to the uh, um, last week, going to that Thursday, and then you got Friday, you got Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. This is Wednesday. So we went long yesterday. Instead of going into the diamonds, look, the DIA is trading at 332 right now. Very nice move, up 0.58 percent. I want you to go into the top seven, the major seven uh, of the tech sector, and I want you to go into the one that's held the most has made all-time highs, kind of reflects a lot of what I'm looking at in the Dow, but has the potential to maybe be an independent source. So we're in at 338 yesterday, and it's trading at 345, 346 right now. So it is up 2.34%. And that was, that is, in other words, if I had got the UDOW correctly, um, it's up. UDOW right now is at 1.69%, but from yesterday's low, it would be up about 3%. And I'm saying to myself, for subscribers, if you're going to put that kind of money to work, you want something that's going to lift off. If the Fed says something really negative, that the stop you have is going to hold. And even if the market then comes down further into next week or to, to the end of this week, um, you want to be in position because this could become an intermediate term buy. That's my thinking right now. So there was a proxy for the Dow, but more a proxy for a lot of things that we had missed before that we wanted to get back when we had an opportunity. So I said to subscribers a little while ago, please, we want to now start trying to get into positions that have sustainability. You, you, you don't know, but you want to be in those things. So just one more time. So Microsoft... The reason why, look at something very interesting. This is for those technicians. I should probably should do that on Friday. But look at this. There's a technique that I developed. I'd drawn in this in, and I almost forgot about it until I was doing the work. That there's a technique that I used for the Chapman Wave flat base restart. And that occurred around about the 9th or 11th or so. 
of uh, October, where Joseph E. Green, if he was, makes a new high, which goes parallel to A, F, E, etc. And then G says, see, I always say, be careful, because that could go to the D. Well, this pattern, I see, we start with the 327, but it came all the way back. I'll be back. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratios, and the Trend Panic Levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, let me just do a bunch of things. So this made a peak F in the one minute chart at 10, about 48. And it's a leg D, it could be a peak D in the five minute chart. And a leg D, it could be a peak D in the 10 minute chart. This is exactly the time frame where you'd say, okay, now some people are going to take some profits, and then there'll be another rally. I don't know if we'll break the rally that we've just had, the, the high. And then there's a kind of a pullback, I would expect, going into the Fed speak. All I can say is if the Dow is up over 120 points off the 230, 230, quarter to three, and holding, that's going to be really good action. And if it gives back, it's going to have to be really bad news to give it back. Now, quick questions, and I'll do this really quickly. Sorry, I'm going to go backwards here. So uh, TGT, what about TGT? TGT is trying to bounce here. I just think it's in the wrong area at this particular time. It needs a little bit more. It'll, it'll have some spike, and at some point at 110, if it's able to hold above 112.50, to 115 in that area, I think finally can have at least a, a, a bounce. But the, right now, I'd be a little careful. SND, what I can't remember what that is. Uh, smart, oh, smart sand. Yeah, this is a 213. 
it's going to have a struggle. Uh, integrated sand company, uh, no. I, I can see it bouncing, but I think the 2, 218 to 222, a lot of resistance. Next question was, oh, where did we go? Where did we go? I did that, I did that, I did that. Fix. Yeah, I think I've covered almost all the questions. I didn't even look at Tiger Tiger TV. Sorry, Tiger Tiger TV. I'll look at it tomorrow. Must have missed you today. So that's what I wanted to look at. Now, so what are we looking at? We're looking at this is a really nice takeoff from the Friday low. Number one. Number two. I I think that you need to be preparing here as if that was not a low but the low but you have to think of it as just a low and that we're going to have a bounce and then come back and recast but the way the market's acting right now if it holds well through the fed speak i think the little 